Ninja will come back. Oh. The thing we want to do for this video is say we want to take every other thing where we don't learn. I want to take the thing where we never still learn. Take build them together. So we're going to use tailwind. We're going to use hooks. And we're going to use some kind of validations also. So if you look inside this application for you, yeah, make I add a new task. So I go say hello world. Okay. Now if I want to add this task, I think click here. If you notice, say now the button don't turn to red. That's not because. I put validation for here and if you notice here you they see say i get this 11 for here so any word where they do for here this go they count them for me and if the words reach zero it will show me none for here if you look this button you can see say even here we know if you even click on and if i click on i even add some validations to say you need to enter some kind text for here so if we say make we enter hello world again hello world and you see say we, we click now so if i click on it go add hello world to the top of the list for here you the same and of course if i add them here i feel also still delete them so if i click delete it will just ask me if i want to delete them and if i say of course i want to delete them it could come out that task for there we still add states for this our application because applications nowadays they always get empty states loading states all those kind of states and we empty this list we get this empty state So before we go even start to do anything, just make sure say you get Node.js installed on top of your machine, the latest version of Node anyway, and then if you even set up PNPM. If now they use NPM, no problem. If they use YAN, no problem. But me, I go always suggest for now, make we they use PNPM for any project where we they work on. So make we go uh, into our terminal. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is say we're gonna want to first create our project. So make we just for inside the root directory where you want to work on, make you just run this following command. So you just say pnpm create vit. What thing go do be say it go come run our normal vit setup for us. We go ask us say which kind of project we want to make, and then we go just tell them the kind of project we want to make. Make we just call this project, and make we just call them taskman as per task manager, and then make we just press enter for here. And then it go ask us if we want React. Make we say we want React. And make we just use JavaScript for here. Now we suppose just change directory into where we want to go. So we could just cd into taskman. We could call run our pnpm script for here. pnpm install. So we want to install all the packages by running pnpm install. Then make we open our code editor. So we could just say we want to open VS Code. So I could type code dot that go open my VS Code for inside this directory. So what you want to do for here? We say make we open our terminal for inside our VS Code. So we're going to work with this terminal for here, and we know we're going to need to leave uh, VS Code. So I could just minimize this one. Uh, come out down for here. All right. Now what you want to do for here? We say we define way, uh, make I just quickly on our way don't already understand what's in this um, folder structure B. Um, I don't already explain given out for previous videos, but make I still try summarize waiting with a C for here. So for inside this React project, uh, we get the SRC. Now here we all our files go stay where we're gonna work on most of the time. Here now the public file or public folder where we want to put everything where go the public. And of course the node module folder but because we use pnpm it did very short for here this is now where all our uh dependencies they stay for here and then here now the git ignore so that whenever we they push our code for git you know go distress us and of course this one are our html file which we go use as react so if we even change this name so make we change this from bit react to task man and this task man uh that now all way we're gonna need change for there every other thing has been set for us we don't get any wala for here oh uh, yeah if you look inside here the package json the package json are just where we they run all our scripts and we they put our files so if you see here now task man if you even change the version number if you want if you call them um version one if you want no problem nobody go disturb you for there uh another thing where we get here of course this is not our build scripts but this is not our dependencies 
just make sure saying that these versions of react will they use and of course will they use for here um some dev dependencies or developer dependencies but we feel look into the vit config so this vit config that just where we they configure our react application for here so make we add tailwind into this project because if you look inside our dev dependency we never even add tailwind so make we add tailwind as a dev dependency for us so how we go take do that make we go online if you go tailwind.com you go feel go check for the documentation for there so you could just come here for inside the docs or if you just come here search for anything so i go click here for docs which go carry me go the installation page and this installation page go find show me how i go take install tailwind for any projects where they work with so if i use tailwind css um, CLI, if you use them for here if i use post css or if we they use the framework so we want to use react right a react now framework so we go come here inside frameworks and then you go come here for inside vit since vit now the bundler um where we they use to build our react project so what we want to do for inside this vit stuff here we say we want to copy all this code here but instead of the npm we're going to use p npm for this ones okay so instead of make we create this project as a template, you go ignore this step one since we they follow this one. But what you want to do is say we want to install Tailwind CSS. So we don't need to create that project. So now from step two, where we're going to work with. So now for inside this step two for here, you could just say one copy this code, this line of code for here. We'll copy them. And then we will just come inside our VS code. So we'll make I actually open up this one small. And for inside this VS code, we can make this bigger. So then I go PC. And then we could just call this one, say we want um paste this code in here. So instead of npm, we could just run p npm. And instead of install, we could just run add. If you run add or install, it no matter. So we go paste that one there, and then make we go back to in CSS documentation, and then make we copy this one for here. So we could just copy this code for here, and it don't install tailwind for us. Like clear them and then make we paste this one here. It waiting it will help us do be say it will help us create a um tailwind config file for us for here. So if we run this command now for us, we press enter for here, it go because we get pmpx. Uh it says you get node, you get pmpx already by default. It will help us to quickly arrange the tailwind config and the post CSS config file also where they see for here. So that now waiting that command. Just help us so we will just come inside this tailwind config for here and what you want to do for here we say for inside this content add the following command so you can come here so make we go to the bottom for step three what you want to do for here now to add this remaining content so if you just copy this whole thing up to the content i could just come back into my vs code and for inside here make we just replace this whole content i make we go back into the documentation and now we're gonna need to copy these whole things here, this whole add CSS and all. If you click here, and then when we copy them, we can go back into our VS code. Now for inside our VS code, um, the source, what you want to do, we say we won't go into the index or styles. I could just import my tailwind CSS for there. Say our our project don't set up correctly, we could just run p uh, npm and run and dev. So once we run on like this. This supposed to help and um, fire our projects with Tailwind setup forum. So I go click here just so that it go open up my browser. And this is say we get the projects for here. So make we try and make sure say Tailwind even day into RAM. So make we go, make we clean up all this code here. We don't need that. And for inside VS code, make we minimize this one. So I could just uh leave this one running and I could just say while this one to run, I go press control and back ticks. So that will help me close that one down. And then I go just clean off all this code with the so Just save and like this. Uh, because that's not all I need. And I go close here. Here. You go see say our um dev dependencies, it don't show as um tailwind for here, and everything don't they work with the auto prefixer and post CSS. Everything they work exactly as we want to make it work. So now make we just try add some tailwind code to our um components. So we get inside the main. If you come inside the main directory, remember, say, I don't tell you now, say, now here we're going to work most of the time. So for inside the SRC folder, you will come down into the main directory or the main.js 
JSX, uh, which now waiting when they use the link into this root ID, which is what I don't already explained this given now for the previous video. Now it be this one with the inside this HTML file. So if we come back inside here uh, into the main JS, we they import the CSS here, which now where we put our Tailwind CSS. We don't wipe every other thing, but the Tailwind CSS. So make we go back in here. And we import our React, of course, for, for the top here. And we import this app component, which now we the render for here. All right. So now when we don't do everything as we like and like this, make we enter into the app.jsx. Now this app.jsx, now here we don't see all the code where we don't see since. So make we add some classes, make we see whether uh tailwind they even work for us, and also make we clean some of this uh code we did here. So make me just write the h1 to see say our tailwind they work now whenever you tailwind or bootstrap now if you just go watch that other video where i post on top bootstrap with html but tailwind they're very similar to bootstrap the only difference we say you they use more classes they give you more flexibility now say if you add custom styles to your thing that now why tailwind they're very popular so make we start to use some classes so one of them we say if now they come from bootstrap side and now gonna say we feel they add classes to they change the way code they show so we know they use css instead we use classes right so make we say we want like a class so since now tailwind we can say we want a class name and then because we don't already set up this is not very important thing, because we don't set up this tailwind of config file so you're gonna need to come here into your base code uh you're gonna need to install this this uh extension it is very important with the column tailwind this tailwind extension you just say uh, i don't need to install them you're going to need to install them if you want they get intellisense feature on top of your vs code uh, when they work with tailwind many say if you type something you're going to see uh suggestions for them how you want to use them and they make our life very easy to work with tailwind css so uh don't forget to install that one another one will also help you when you they do react now this one with the color make i just show now with the column um auto import so you go install this one too so a lot of times you're going to forget to the import things and auto imports they help me they import them so you go they also they help you they import them if you feel also set up this um plugin which now um auto named auto rename tag we're going to help you to the rename your react tags or your element tags also you're going to need to also install a code spell checker i go drop video for now about all these extensions where i they use to so they make my react development or even just web development or any de development on top of my vs code much interested to the work with okay so make we add some tailwind classes so because we don't set up our tailwind with the tailwind config file and with the tailwind intellisense for vs code if you just press ctrl and if you just press tab now this will help us load some setting classes and all these classes nine tailwind they give us so make we play with these classes for a minute so make we add uh, a class of text dash and we want to make this text they did be so we're gonna say make the text be four and make we say excel so we want to make it be excel make it be four excel and this pop-up they give you information on the class where they use so if i do i'm like this and press this five this five excel i go get font size with three rem uh, which is about uh 48 pixels and i go give them line height of one just by writing only just this one line of code so then i'm waiting tailwind they help me they do so I feel just say okay with that one I don't already make the class big I don't do everything I want and then make I just say I want to say hello world okay and if you press save make we go back into the browser and you go see say we get hello world for here so make we try to change the color with tailwind so of course if I want to change the color for tailwind I could just say text dash sorry dash and then we go give them the color what we want so if i want to make it be red i go say text dash red and then i go give them the shade of red so from 50 to about 900 now the shade where i feel give them so i feel just give them 500 and then i go press save so it go give me this color for here make me save them make me go back i just say i get this red text for here and all these things now tailwind so make me go back well the first place to start any application now for inside the app components so why we not just build the ui first and then we go add logic to our ui 
that makes sense and then i go put vs code for here so now make we clean this code off make we add some styles for tailwind we could just say we want to do bg and we could say dash and we go put the color where we want so background for bg slate so i could say slate 900 i could just select this one for here so we're gonna say we want the um h then i want to make the height make it full reach the whole screen and if you press save it was supposed to give me this whole thing for here meanwhile make we not forget say we know they use css for here so no need to import this css way they for here so so if we erase that css because if you check out they give us this pattern for here so uh we're supposed to clean up so good make me come inside this div and remember i say this div won't give them children so make we just wrap them inside brackets for here make we just say for inside here put like a div so we could just say this div will make you just get a class to carry everything with in the middle make it a carry and go margin auto and for inside this div now this div we want to set all the text inside this div we want to set them to center so we'll say we want a class with the div because we did use image, but we're going to add the classes now. So the class will define our text center. And we want also make space there for the top and the bottom. So margin top bottom. And we want to set them to like 12. All right. And then make we set the space. And this space we want to set them um y, we want to set them to like one. Put some text inside, inside here, inside this div. So how we go down, make we write the h1. And this H1, make we just say this H1, we could just give them a class name. So we could just say class name. And the class we want to give them a text dash um, five. Um, make we make them five times large. So five XL, right? Just like we did before. But now make we just add some text. We could just say uh, hello for here. Make we say we want to set the text for all our content. Make we say we want to make the text day white. So we could say, um, text dash white and just like that we're supposed to get this white text right and then make we add some subtext for here and then make we just say this subtext will just be p tag and then we will just say uh word for here we save it like this we want this kind of text so this now which we want to every time and make we look the finished version you just see we get this task manager so make we name our own task manager or something like that and uh make we say uh, make we just copy this text and if we call this text anything we want as a subtitle i could just copy and paste them make we add some kind of other styles for them so i could just call these classes out and uh i go they move fast so i beg i'm not going to explain most of the things because i suppose i already know what thing i did do for here so uh if you don't know what all these patterns margins just go learn i don't do videos about them for the css section and uh of our video state days so make sure to check them out uh, i will put link for the description for now so we could just say we want px 10 then now uh, we want uh 10 pixels for both sides please if you want to add media query if you could just put the the screen size so if you say sm uh if you say um lg if you do that one for large which not what we could do and then we will just set the styles where we want so we will say for large screens we want to make the pixels for both sides 44 for here uh also make we set the grid make we set them to grid and make we press save so now when we don't set them to grid we don't arrange them then make we set the rest of the content. So we want to bring the content come down here. So make we say we want to set them to grid, dash flow, dash row. All right. So now we don't set how we want to make our grid they behave. And then we want to set the content. So we want to set the content to the center. So we'll say content, and we'll set them to center. So now if I press save, it will push the content come the center. And then make we just give them some gaps. So we could just say gap. I'm gonna just set that gap in the y axis. We could set them to 10 for here. So because we get this heading here, what if we go on use them again for our code? Why we not just turn this code into a component of your own? So make we do like that. So first of all, make we create a new file. So I go come here for inside my uh, VS Code. You could just come here for inside the explorer and then you will just come into the src directory right when you're inside the src you go right click and then you will come this new folder 
So what do we want to do? Well, we want to create a component folder. So I could just come here and create a component. And inside this component directory or component folder, I make it create that file. So the file we want, the heading. And of course, since now components, don't forget to make an uppercase heading. All right. But we want to set them to dot JSX because JSX now waiting with the right. So we could come here. And inside this JSX file, uh, what do you want to do for here? We say we want to carry that our component. So make we copy this code out. So make we cut down from here up. So make we go make the heading component. So for inside this heading components, make we add that component. Remember, I say we they work with functional components, right? And now that functional components where we want build. So make we just say we want a function. And this function, we could just call them heading. And this heading, we could pass every other props where we need inside them. So the props where we go like deal with, we go add them in a minute. So we could say return the values where we want, or we return these elements. So we could just put this element for here for now. And then make we just clean this code a bit. So we want come on this tax manager. And we want to make them dynamic. So remember, say now like JSX with the right, right? So we're gonna to need to pass in the props where we want. Remember, we they make our own components, so we don't too need to they copy all this text all the time. So we could just say we want. Well, make we just say we want the title, and then make we say we want the subtitle, and then make we pass these props where we get. Remember, say we they use the structuring for here. In case you don't understand what I did do for here, I did use the structure into the commod the values as props. If not, if you just do props dot this dot that, but we don't want to use prop dot that, so we just want to use the structure info here. So we could just say we want the title, make it day here, and also for inside here, we want the subtitle. All right, so anytime we call this functions or this components, we're going to get them. No, be function, this is a functional component. We're going to get them but if we want to use this component we're going to need to export them so make sure no forget to do that if you export them like this if you export them by default and which now what we will do so we will say export default and then we will send the default to the component where we want uh export which now the heading where we want export so make we come inside our app the js and then make we import this component so it goes close to the top of our component and then make we just import this heading right we will say we want import we will give the path to the file where we want import or to the components where we want import so i could just say i want import from this directory where we did you will say you want come from this directory enter into this directory so you want come up from this you day here inside this src directory and you want navigate come the component directory so because you did inside the src directory you will say dot slash the components directory so now we just need only the heading components so we will add them for there and now because we don't import them we also need to define them inside our import statement so we could just say we want to give them the heading we could just say we want heading component and once we do done like this if it does uh, if it does close them and for inside this heading components we're going to pass the props where we need the props where we need now the title so if you just done like this and assign them to this string, say task manager, and you just say now we get this task manager, and then make we add the subtitle. So because of the way we don't structure our component, if we add our subtitle, and by calling the subtitle uh dummy text where they put for here, so that we get something where we go for use work with. So make we move on, make we look the first one. So the way you go to think about components for React, if you see things like this, now say you go to need to put everything into boxes for your mind. You go to look here, say, okay, this now box, this go be one component if you want. You could say, okay, this now box, this side here, and this you go want to make this a component on your own. You understand? For example, if you say hello, yeah, and we add something, you go see, say, this one now component on your own. You understand so every little thing for react we feel make up a component or we feel group the components together that's a very important concept to understand as you the user you go to understand waiting with the talk for here let me go back to project 
and then make we add the form. Now, for inside the form, the best way where we go fit write this form, where we go fit understand them. Now, for us to first make the form for inside here, and once we make up for here, we'll call extract the code into a component, or we could just convert them into a simple component where we fit the work with. So, make we write the form. So, first off, make we just write a simple D, and then make we add a p tag for here so since we did build this form for here make we also build this one right so make we come here so we could just say we want to write a character and then make we add a class to this uh, our p tag so we can say class name and the class names where we want now the text make it this small make the text be very small and then make the text uh make it the center uh make it get margin for the bottom so we say mb once say none, we will just add one simple emoji. If I the type, we're gonna to need to add some kind of validations, and those validations only if it come from inside this form. So make we work on this form, and then we go fit the effect here based on the changes from inside this form. We're gonna see how we are the components could they complement each other based on within the, the form. So this is a very interesting feature. Make we add up. So for just under this paragraph uh, tag for here, so make we start to add that form. So for here, we could just start to work with the form. So we could use the HTML form tag, and we won't give them a class of flex, but also we won't come and say make it get an input as a child. So we could say input, then we also want a button. So we could say plus btn. Press tab for there, and then we could get this button. So make we come on this action, we clean this form a bit. So already we just need this form we get a uh, class of flex and it is to say we get the form for here so so for inside our input now we want a name and this name attribute one make we just call and say task input like so and then make we give them a placeholder and this placeholder make we just say feed bingo at 3 p.m so make we give them some time max length so we say max length and the maximum length we want now 70 so as now 70 for here so now make we add a class for here even so we can say class class is where we find okay use them for here a padding for top and bottom so we'll say py and we won't give them two but by default i want the padding on the left and right i won't give them dash three for here because now so till when they work say we want padding for top and bottom that's in the y-axis and in the x-axis we want also three pixels for the x-axis that now for the left and for the right make we say we want make the text make it be two times extra large so we'll say two excel make we come on that second dash and then make me say we want make it the rounded make we set the rounded to the large rounded and then we just can set the text to center and then we can set the border and as we don't activate this border make we also talk say we want the outline and make we set this outline to one for here and then make we also talk say we want make the outline make it get uh, make it be the current outline so we'll say dash current and then make we set the bg make we set them to slate and make we say we want slate 700 and this 700 slates make we reduce the opacity so make we make us slightly uh, transparent by adding slash 50. you don't understand so if i press save now you can see say we get this input with the here so make we add this button for here and make we say this button by default make we give them some other attributes so we could say this button now type of submit first and then we could add the text make we just say um save task okay that's now why the button don't show the first time so we get that button for there but we won't add some kind of other attributes right so make we add our styles to them we make the pattern the top and um, bottom make it day 1.5 so we'll say 1.5 and then we'll say make the padding for the left and the right down in the px axis make it be eight for here all right we could just set them to eight margin x uh for the left and for the right make you set them to like about five for there and then make we set the transition where we want we want the ease in and then make we give them a duration right of uh, make we just set the duration to 300 and then we add the round button for there 
okay so then i wait till once then i've also like make me add a background uh, a hover effect so for tailwind instead of making the add hover effect anyhow make you just add this bg first so we'll say one made the bg make it be red but make it be bg red 500 for now and this is say now we get this button for here and now it act as submit so if i click on it is submit our form is say the page they refresh so to act hover effect for tailwind now just write hover over your contact say you want the background yeah you want to set the bg to another color so you go say okay well, when time i hover on now i'll make the bg make it be red but instead of red 500 make it be red 400 so if you hover on top of you can see say the color go day bright small if it's common time it go dark small now waiting we they do for their soul so now make we add functionalities maybe say if we did type we go feel the update these values how we gonna take drum so for react if we want to do that kind of thing we could just come inside here into our components where they here so then we can talk say we want to add a state so i don't really explain given our waiting state b and state not just way for us so they get notification or to they notify whether event or something don't happen on top of our application on top of our components but before we put the state now waiting for like do be say i for like just Commod this component and I feel like just put them into your own component. So we're going to work on top only that file alone, right? So make we do like that. So make we come inside here, uh, make we open the site tab, and then for inside our component folder for here, we will get, you know, so we get this component folder, we could just come here and then for inside this component folder, we could talk to you, won't make a new file. And this new file, when we call them, say, we won't make a task form, okay? So we're we'll going to say form. I make sure to say this now uppercase because now component will be make. But instead, we're we'll going to say we want to make it be just dot uh, JSX. Okay, that means say we want to write JSX. Now, this JSX we want to write for here. Make we just say we want to start to add our components into RAM. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is say we're going to need to call our function, right? So we go create, since we did create the components, we could just say we want to create a function, right? And this function, we could just say we want to export them by default. So we could just say export default. And like this, we could get them as a component where we export. Then we could give them a name. So we'll say the name when we want now the task form. Because now waiting one call form. Now waiting one call this component. So and then make it close, make it close this tab. We'll come out this um parameter for here. This params we're not gonna add anything for now and then we're gonna just say we want to return our component waiting i want to return now make we go back into our code into the app and then make we pull all this code for here all this one way they here like this make we pull everything safe make we put them inside one file so i go click here and you see say vs code they help me they show where the div they end so you see say they highlighted because i click the first one so that's another trick for now so uh waiting that they also like do be say if you just press control shift and then i will press my curly brace and if i press them it will help me reduce with the column collapse or if you come here also it just collapse them huh? but uh i know today use them all the time so if you just come here and then we could just cut everything for here all right so i could just press uh control control x and that will help me cut all the code where they here and then what you want to be saying we want to return this code not be inside the header we want to return them inside the form components with it here so so for inside this task form i could just drop them inside the return statement for inside that bracket with it there i could drop them so if i press save for here and then we we'll go back into the app js component with it here or our main app js what we're going to need to do because we don't the export now make we import this component in that's my auto import plugin will help me sort out the whole thing so just underneath the header we want to render our component so i could just say i want the task form and then if i press save it will help me render the task form for here so make we start to work on the form for inside the own components so that we go feel understand how they work for us here so so for inside this task form from components for the very top of the form like this the top ganga i can't go talk say i want import now this now the use state hook so make we go into here so as we don't import this use state hook with the inside here like this so make we talk say and for inside this our component make we push that one down but inside these components here make sure say you they inside your components now here we go to call our hooks so you're going to always call your hooks for the top of your components where they run out 
okay so for inside here we're going to say const we won't call this hook a user value and we won't call this uh user value state sorry no be hook one call and state and this user value state uh what you want to be say one set one way where we say we got the set down so we're gonna say one may set the user value when we don't set them like this then we want to assign them to use state hook where we use so we'll just say use state hook then we'll just put some initial state or initial value into this thing so that whenever the component load now this value we could get i could just console log my value so i could just like console log this value so copy them and if you paste them here so if we open the dev tool for the side now and I refresh the page, you can see say we get this console log message for here. So if I say okay, I want to make the message make it just be uh hello, the initial hook. If I press save and we say make we refresh the page, every time when the page load, it go to show us this hook for here, say hello for here. So this is now how it will work for us. So for inside our hook, make we leave them as blank. So what we want to do for inside here, we say we want to check if this string, if it's empty, or we want to update this string with values. We want to give them something every time with something they typed into them. So how we gonna take do that one? Now, very simple thing. The first thing we're gonna need to do be say we're gonna go into our input for inside the form, and then we're gonna attach our events to them. So the event we define are the unchanged events. I already shown now how to they work with events, right? So we define the unchanged event. If you never watch the video about how we take the work with events, we're gonna go watch the other video for how we take the work event for React. So make we come inside here for inside this event. Make we say we want to call the object. Most of the time we call them the event, and then we want to take that event object and we want to pass them something. So what in one pass and we say one pass and the state where we want change. That now this state for the top for here. So we want change the state, right? So we want to say okay, one pass in the state, but we want to return the state with change values. So the va the state where we define now this set sorry set user value and this set user value. What we go talk we say for inside here we want passing the event dot target dot value. So whatever value as we they change this input for here, this input element as we they change them, they type into the value, the thing go they change, you go they change, you go they change, you go they show us every time. Say if they change your so make we press save for here. And if I press um the keys here, you they see say it a console log the values. With these values changed now, what if we do say if we come, they detect where that changes don't happen. Why? Because we get access. To the state for here so if you do anything whenever the state don't change so make we come inside here make we say we want to create a constant and make we just call up is empty so what you want to be say we want the user and they check whether the user value if the length of this string if it change if he get value then we're going to get this is empty so make we see how it they work so i could just call um duplicate this one and change the value is empty and I go press save for there, then make we refresh the page and make we see what we get. So you see, say now we get zero for here, and this zero way there here. So make we say this zero if we start to the type the string or the length of this value, then at the strings it could increase. So make we try if I press some, you go see, say we get six, if I press some, we get seven, eight, more and more. The string they increase, but if I they reduce some, the string you go see, say the strings it they reduce so now when we get this is empty now what if we do with them we say we feel just they use them anywhere where we want for inside our component i'm going to scroll down small if it's empty and if it did greater than zero then we want to do something right so what do you want to do well first thing we go like do we say we go like use the ternary operator return a string but we will use back ticks for this string and then we could just say otherwise make it return something else make you return this one so we'll say if this they empty do that otherwise the value they more than that amount i'm gonna say one use another emoji and i could just say green for here this will give me this green circle and if i start to the type you can see say we get the green circle and if i clean them when they reach zero react go change them and react to that code and it will give me zero for inside this code where they here 
instead of make you just return only this one make you write template string for here i could just say for inside here i want to call the is empty and outside this is empty still for inside the same statement i want to do another template string but i want to check is empty if it day equals to 70. so i could do triple equals and i could say 70 for them so now just go check if we don't reach the max the max uh length of the number and if we don't reach there then i go say i want to do something so i go say otherwise if we reach there then i beg go tell us say now the max where we don't reach okay otherwise i want to make it do something else so otherwise do that green text for them so if i press save for here you can see say, where they get the characters now so, so these characters it could show us the characters because we want to see the is empty. So the is empty now be this where they give us all the characters and just to check when you reach 70, bam, it don't lock. Say we don't reach the max. So make we put one small emoji for you. Make we just copy this one just to show say we don't reach the max number. So if you press on like this, you can see say we reach the max. If you say make a Clean everything you get none but if you start to the type you're going to get the values for there so this is now how react they react to our code for here so okay now if we say make we submit this form but nothing they happen but it don't restart make we start to the add uh waiting good they happen whenever we they submit this form for here so so make we come into our form make you scroll down to here and for inside this form tag what you want to do for here we say we want to set the on submit now this on submit what you want to do on submit we say make we just take the event object for here so i could just take the event or column e self and then we could just use a fat arrow function just to prevent the event that's not all we want to do for you so we just e dot event and then we just set down to default for there now you know going to work like before you could stop you know going to submit the form so make we try we fill out the values and then we press submit you see say nothing they happen again you know they submit the form you know they refresh the page again so how we could take the handle submit for inside this our form very simple for inside this form for here make we say on top the return statement on top the return block so we could just come on this return and make we clean all these values, all this console over there here. And make we say for inside here, we want to add a function. And this function, make we call them handle a submit. Okay. You know they're taking any parameter, but what you're gonna do we say it gonna help us today handle the submit events where we want. So make we say we want console log the value. So we're gonna say we want the value then a user value okay and this user value what we want to say we want the console log um, every time when we click on um. we want the console log waiting day inside this value then what we want to do for here so make we come into here remember so we call this handle submit function if you call a monkey if you call a goat it no matter so we'll just come here into our button i'm going to just attach an on click event so we'll go say on click and this on click event what we want to do we say we want to pass in that our function of handle submit so anytime when we do this on click event it will call this handle submit function we will get for here so if i press save for now and then uh, i say make i just clean this console and press submit you're going to give me the value you're going to give me the value you're going to give me the value the value change again you're going to give me the other value if i change them again you will give me that value because we did get this value like this we go like where we say we go to reset the values so how we do am simple we could just change the state so we could just say set user value state and then we could just set them back to uh, double quotes and that will help us to reset the value so make i just add a comment say for now so if i click here now it could clean the values for me so if i press that you could see say it don't clean the values to none but this value for here you know they cool why you know they change simple because we never set the value for the input so make we come inside here and uh make we come just at the bottom for here make we change this value so we could just set the value to value and then we want to set this value to equals to whatever the user value be nine that value go to give us so if we come here and then we say make we um make i clean this up small and then make we put some values here see and then you see say we they get everything that is so if i press here it's supposed to clean this text also and update the value of this form so if i press here 
you see, say you don't clean the form you don't give me that new value if i click them again it will give me say empty value if i click and click and click on it will give me that empty value for inside this our function for here we just say if is empty make we use that is empty you see say this is empty we just use any 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 so i could just say return something so i feel return an alert for here and this alert message make we just return a message we could just tell us say so if it they empty now that time it could call this code but what you want to say we you know one time we want time if you know they empty so we go put the bang or uh, exclamation point so because the text they here like this if we press all this text now and we click them you know go give us any message you know give us any warning but if we click them again we they get this enter some text now so make we clean this other uh, statement with it here now what you want to be say we need a way where we say we go feed the pass this information where we know about our form for example if we say hello world or here how we go take pass that information go the other components like how we go take let other another component know say now nah, what we want to do say we they say hello world for this component i'm going to take do for react we're going to use props to the pass down that data or that information will be defined so if we come here go be an event so we we'll say on add task and this add task because we they we we know say it will be props so we we'll go say we want to structure our code for inside here on add task okay as a function then we want pass in whatever value where we get i remember say the value where we always get now the user value so that user value Whenever we pass them into this event for here, we're going to render this event. So make we go into the parent component, not be this one again. Make we go into the app component. And for inside this app component, make we say we want pass in that props. So for inside this app component, we're going to say we want pass in the props of on, uh, no, not RG, not RG, sorry. I say now RG, make I go back. Uh, where the props? Where are they? Aha. Uh -huh. Not addy when I feel don't say I'm already not add, not be addy. <laughs> and then I add that be added that I don't know. So make we just press save for there. And because we get this error for here, we could press save. So on add task, we want add new task. And if we do it like this, say we want add new task, make we call this add new task function because it could be passing that value. Make we come to the very top of our components, but on top of the return statement. Make we talk say we want to add this function. So we we'll go say we want a const. Then make we just call them const add new task. And this add new task, make we we'll just assign them to a fat arrow function. And this fat arrow function for here, so we want to do something inside. Right? So first make we just CLG or console.log the value will be defined. So we we'll go say we want the task. And make we just say we define the task so that we could just make sure say we they pass in that value into RAM correctly. So if I press save task, you can see say we they get this message from line number six for inside our app component for here. So, so for inside this app component, make we say we want import React state. So we we'll say we want import, and we we'll gonna say we want to use the use state. Sorry, use state. If you're going to help me arrange them. So we want to use this use state. So we could just come here and then we go say we want a const. And then make we call them as an array, but we want to call all tasks. And then we want to set all tasks. So we can say set all tasks. And for inside here, what we want to do we say we want way we say we feel they call our use state, but we want to set the initial value to an array. So we could just get this empty array by default. Say, oh, okay, oh, now the empty array of this state will be one. This is a very important concept. So what you want to do for inside here, we say, whenever we update this, uh, our component for here, this information for here, we want to update the state. We want to add this one and this one into this array where they here. So for inside here, this add task here, what you want to do, we say, we want to set the values for them. So we could just say, we want to set all tasks. All right, so this state will be defined. And then we we'll go just push in the array for them because we didn't work with the array. So we're not going to use the push method like before, but instead we go update them with the spread operator. So if we go say we want a new array, but this array won't spread all the existing old tasks into RAM. So this new parameter where we get for here, now we go con call as the task. So make we console log, even not this new one, but instead make with the console log the all 
or task make the drum outside here so fresh page you can see say we don't get anything you can see say we get this initial value of an empty array no worries saying that too but you get this empty initial empty array for there and then make another the look here and then if we start to the type you can see say we get that value then if i press save it they add to this array we get this array with this string and if i put more again and we press save again it go add to this array so you see so anytime we will add with the add to this array this is say the length of the array it they increase until one problem when we of course reset the page and we press um and we press save everything don't clear our array don't they clean again so make we store this data now to do that one now we could just talk say we won't use the local storage every browser they always get in own local storage make i open this one first then we could just come here into applications for here if you click application you go see say we get this storage for here and this storage now they give us this local storage for this address you see say now this port we they use we they use this local host with this port that now why we get this local storage for here now make we go back into the main application and if you look inside the main application if we save the name say hello and you say make we press save for here you go see say it is saved right but if i click refresh you go see say it's still there why so make we inspect the local storage for this final project then we go see how local storage they work so if you look inside here you go see say local storage they help me they store this information if i come here inside this one you go see say local storage they help me store this much information so if they store the key which now where i don't give them the stored task and then they store the value where we go put all the information what we want but you just know say to store data we the store for local storage as a string and because we're going to use string we're going to need to make them as json right so we're going to need to give them a key and then we're going to give them a value right so this key for here not the task and then we just give them say hello and of course this key for here not the task id and we just give them this long string of task id store task where they see for here this key if you hold many other values for here so these values now just objects where we store inside this array so if i say word for here and i press save again you will see say you don't add another item to the local storage this is the local storage that now i store this information so if i refresh it go always there that this information it go always there if i click on you go see say this information day all the time so what they here with this id so now so we're going to use i'm going to use this id to the target each item for here instead of making the write the id one by one we're going to generate the id where we're going to use that now the task id and we're going to assign them to here i'm going to we're going to put the task for the words where we want so make we do like that so make i just move and come here make we go back to main one all right guys zoom out small for here let's make it smaller so i'll go pc say and if you check it you can see say we don't get any key and we don't get any value so make we add that key and make we add that value so how we going to take boom well, the best way we're going to need to do is say we want to add the local storage. So Windows do already expose us to something. Because if you check the console and I type in Windows dot local storage. So if you set an item, if you get an item, if you even clear the whole items where we want. So if you say we want to take the set item, or if you say you want the get items, or if you even just say you want to clear the items. So whichever one you want, we feel the user, they work with our local storage. Okay. Now, for inside our code, we're not going to type in the window. We could just type in the local storage dot, and then you get all those properties where we feel used for inside our local storage. And one of those properties where we would like use, now say, like we just say we want to set the items for inside our local storage. And inside here, it is taking two parameters. So we go first say the string we want call up this the key we want call this one. So make we just call them stored task. Okay. Now this stored task we go save them as the key for our local data, our local storage. For the second parameter, which we want to be saying one call JSON. All right. So we want to use the JSON object, but we want stringify them. And the thing with the stringify, they help us. They do they say it they help us. They change the object or what we go to pass into RAM into a string, right? And then of course we can pass in the information when we want turn to stringify. So of course which information be that? And that now this our array of all task. If we save this code now, make we open it into application. If you look inside application here, you will see say now we get this task ID for inside application. And if you look inside the value, you will see say we get this array with this information. So if I say uh, hello again, 
and we press enter you will see say now it don't really save for our local storage if i press refresh it will come clean our local storage all right so why why did it clean every time when we press refresh i think say we talk say it could stay but that's not because react they always they refresh the dome because the code where we write for here we say anytime where we refresh the page make this empty array make it show so this initial value now can they wipe everything so because now empty array that's why we they save only this empty array so we're going to need to control how we want to make the information save we're going to need to control how we want to make the information they save or how we want to make the information they delete i want all those information now so we're going to control them so we can go back into our code so now, if you look for inside this code for here, maybe I just put a simple comment so that we could see say now wait till they do. So if you look inside here for inside this place, I could just give a space here and I could just put some comments. So as we don't store this information for here, so what do we want to do with them? How we go take control this information? Well, we're gonna need to use life cycle methods. Life cycle methods now we will say react go they react to our components it could understand the life the lifetime of our components and we want to use the life cycle methods to they change something or to they detect whether the page don't load or whether um the component don't mount or whether the component don't mount finish we want to use them that our life cycle methods to do that we want to use the use effect hook and this use effect hook we go use them based on the life cycle method principles so what we go do we say we go come come back here into the very top of our code for here and we can say for where will they use this use state what you want to be say we want to call the use effect so we'll say we want the use effect and this use effect what we go do we say we want effect something we want change an effect of something and when the component load or when the component mount and when the component don't mount when they put some kind of fizzy into them so then i'm waiting me to use this use effect to they do so so make we say for inside here we go call use effect so you go say use effect and, and in fact make i even add some comments for us for here so make i just say um what you want to say we won't call this use effect hook but and this use effect hook it take taking a callback function as a first parameter and then the second parameter they take in a dependency array so i will show now for here so the first parameter make we use the fat arrow function i'm going to say this fat arrow function what you want to say we won't use and passing everything we want to do first so what is the first thing we would like to do well let me just first console log something so we're going to say our code the work so i could just console.log whatever message we want so i could just say hi if you work with this hook this use effect it is very important make you they know how you they write them because if i run the code like this i could get some kind of errors so you suppose get the last or the second parameter you suppose adam and the second parameter now the dependency array so if i press comma here for the second parameter i could just press the array to make them an empty array for here now this empty array just means say any time where we don't get a dependency this component go run only once this use effect hook it go run just once and it go run whenever the component mount that's not why i add this comment so if you press it for here we're supposed to see high whenever the component don't load so if i see if i check here you can see say we the get down for here for this li uh, line 19 we the get this um high for here so okay so anytime with the component load if i do any other thing you're not going to see the component if i press this one i click up you're not going to see this high again but if i refresh the page now that time you're going to see high so i don't press refresh now i'm going to see high you're going to see high you're going to see high okay so make i clean this uh code off now what you want to be say we want way we say at first since our component they load first we want check we want to know whether information they inside our local storage so how we go take down very simple make we come up here and what i want to be say uh, i want to clean this console log message first and then for here what i want to be say for just on top of this add task i want to just create a new like helper uh function where we're going to use inside only this component so i could just call and say const and we're going to call them get local local storage uh, or data we could call them data for here so we want this function this get local uh local data function we want to assign them to a fat arrow function and this fat arrow function where we assign them to we know we could just do the uh we could just return our json 
and we want to do the JSON dot pass because we want to pass that information. And the information we want to pass into RAM now anything with the local storage, okay? Dot get items and the get items then we want to say okay, what do we want to get? So the get items it expect one parameter and the single parameter we expect now is string of the key where we get. Remember waiting the key be the key now that information now this one now this key for here where they store all that information we go there inside this array so we want to add that key into here so as the get items parameter so we'll say we want the stored task because that's not the key will be column okay now if we do it like this anytime with this function run this get local data it go they check if this key they available inside here. If you did, it will tell us. If you know they, it will tell us. So make we console log and make we see what they even tell us. So if you just say uh inside this uh use effect hook, make we say we want console log that data or we want console log that information where we they expect. So we could just say for inside this first use effect, whenever the component load, instead of just console log high for inside here, what you want to be say we want console log the value of which we get. So we could say make we console log that so we say console log get local data. Make we come up this high for now. So if we come inside our console, if I call them, it will give me just the empty array, right? I would like just uh say make I assign them to something. So I could say const. I will just call them local data for here. Uh because I want to use it like that. So I will say local data. And this local data we could just assign them to that function so that we're going to call them that inside this use effect all right now for inside this use effect i could say if i could put an if statement here and i could say for this if statement what you want to say if this local data if the local data no be null like this say if you no be null at all you want to do something right so what you want to do well you want console log make we first console log this data so we could just say local data so then how this use effect Go to work for us. So make we add that local data. We could just say we want set all tasks and then we could just assign that all tasks to local data. Console log our local data. One way we say we're going to always they save this information to the local storage whenever a component loads. So we'll go open another use effect. So make I cut this code for here. I could just cut them. And then underneath here, under the second one, make we add another comment. So now make we add that use effect for the bottom of our code for here. So we'll go say we want another use effect. If we add as many use effects as you want, so don't worry about them. But this use effect, so remember, it is taking a callback function. So never forget that one. And the second parameter could just be for now just an empty array. All right. So I go explain the dependency array right now. You can see as with the user. So you can see, say for inside this use effect, we want the user and they store something, right? We want the user and they store that data. So we go place that storage data sorry we go place that storage data where we want so this information where they store this data remember say we they use this one to store the data as this task right we they store that information make we use something to the controller so we'll say if the all task okay with the all task array if the dot length all right so if the length of that array now if it day if it get length meaning say if the length pass zero then we won't do something right you don't need to type anything but we want to do something and what you want to be saying we want to store that information inside here so that's why i move them into the if block the storage information otherwise we want to do something so we want to say okay otherwise else we want to do another thing now what you want to do well we go like just local storage dot clear okay so this will help us clear the information so it go check whether if we don't get anything it go clear that information if something they leave them there okay so it could do like that and now because we did do this information like this now we don't get anything inside here but we go only if we do them once why because we never add anything for the dependency array so we want that we say whenever we change this um states whenever this we, we set the state whenever this state for here change whenever we update this array for here now that time where we want to run this effect now that time we want to run the second use effect we will just make for here so for inside this dependency array we can add all tasks so anytime we all tasks change now that time we our code would help us they arrange itself where for here so so if we come into here like we say 
and then we press enter you can see say we get hello from local so if i refresh you see say the information still there here we don't need to save this information inside our local browser so if you say a uh, word for here you can see say you don't add that word that array of word for here so you see hello from local and you don't add word for here but how we could take the target the information make we come inside the add task and we go collapse the second use effect okay so for inside here what we're going to do is say we want way we say we're going to get the id we're going to assign an id or we're going to assign an id and we're going to assign the task where we want and then we're going to put them inside an object so we're going to say const and then we could just call them new task okay so we'll say new task because then i'm waiting to try and add and this new task we could just say okay well, this new task now just a simple object then instead of this task we did here so we could just say we want to return new task okay so now this new task object we did here what you want to do be say we go like way we say we feel they add that new task so if you just say we want task new for here just for testing and then make we say we want column task for here so if i press save for now and we say make we store this information now so if i say hello and we press save for here we the get them for here as an object now if you want the target them we feel they use the indexes right to so the target each one but how we take the programmatically automatically they get the ids or they get the values of which we want simple we're gonna need way to the add those id so we go open our terminal for here and i feel just click here or i feel just click here so i go open another terminal on the side so make i just open click here to open another terminal for the side still leave your server the wrong now make we make them bigger and then make we add that package inside here make we call them say pnpm remember add or install uuid so if i add this package now and i press enter it's supposed to install this package into my server or into my project where they work on for here so okay you don't install make i just close this tab now when we don't install that package make we first import the package into our application so so to do that one we could come to the top of our application if you just come for inside here just above the react we could just import them as a package so i would say import make we just put our curly brace for there from and then the package where we want to import so i could just put my string and say i want to import from the uuid and now this uuid package make it close out for inside here this uuid package you get different different versions where we get for the uuid i won't take the version 4 then at the v4 and I could just say I want to set them as something. So I feel rename my import. So instead of using V4 all the time, I could just say I want to use them as I say UUID V4 for here. Okay. So anytime why the column, I could just say import them as UUID V4. So make we go into our add new task. And inside this add new task, what we we'll do we say we want to save the task ID. ID. And this task ID now, make we assign them to the uuid so they say uu they say use uuid v4 and then we go just call them as a function so as we call them as a function it will help us to generate a new uuid every time so remember i said we're passing this new task object into the state for here so we just update the state every time so we'll make we try make we save them make we see which we do for here so if i say hello with id Press enter for here. Make we enter the task. You go see, say we get this number four. And at the last one, we get this ID number. And just like that, we they get random ID numbers every time. Even if you say make with a console log the UUID every time, it's gonna give you a new ID number. So if I say CLG or console.log uh, and I say UUID, and we call this function every time, it's gonna help us to get a new UUID. So if I open up the console for here. You can see, say, we they get this new ID number every time. So, make I refresh. You can see, say, we they get this new ID, we they get this new ID, we they get this new ID. So, every time, just like that, it will help me to generate a new UUID. If they use ES6, make I just change this name from here, make we clean this, and say we just want the task of the task. And it will still work exactly the same for here. And by the way, make I just change this all task to all task with the S. Okay. So I go just press F2 for inside the state. I'll go put the S for there. And I go come here and I go press S2 again. I go put the S for there. All right. So just to show, say, now multiple different tasks. Now with it.
try and change for here. So uh, if I add them, um, you see, say with the, with the, our array, they grow for us for here, and we add this number for here. So make I clean this local storage. So if I say hello again and press save, we get this clean information for here where they say hello, and we get the ID number where they give us for here. So we did generate a task and we did generate our ID number for here. So so make we come, make we start to display this information. And then what you want to say for now, make I just close here. And then for inside here, we could just work for inside here. So we will see what we do for here. So as we don't check and they save that information for inside the uh, local storage, just remember say now the information go day our browser until we clean the browser history or something like that. Now that time where that information go clean for here. So make we come, make we start to add a way for us to the display that data. So the first thing we would like to do for inside here, now say we want a way we say we're going to get like a list of all the tasks. How we going to take drum? Simple. We could just come inside here, just after all that div for here, but still inside the main component div. What do you want to say? You want to create like another div. What made this div get class of LG? Now for large screen. So we'll say we want the margin for the left and the right, make it be 20 for large screen. So we'll just say 20 for here. And that's not all what we need for the class. So we can just press tab. And for inside here, now here we can come put like a list of all the items where we get inside our local storage where we want display. So we could just say we want an unordered list, but this unordered list, it gets a class and won't give the class of flex. And then we won't give them some other classes. So we'll say flex and uh instead of flex but one make the flex make it be in the colon direction you'll we'll say cool and uh, in this colon direction make we want make it be the reverse colon direction so you we'll say reverse sorry and make we give them a gap so make we say one gap in the uh y direction so then uh, in the y axis so we'll say gap dash y and uh as we do this gap dash y make we say we want make it be by three so we could set that gap from the top and from the bottom to three. So we want that kind of space like that. And then we want some more other classes. But first, make we set the max, uh, the max height, then at max h to 60. And then make we add another class of overflow, overflow. And make we set that overflow to y in direction. But we'll make it be just scroll. So make we add some padding so we'll just say we want a class of padding but we want the patterns for the left and for the right and we're gonna set that padding to six from here and uh, once we press tab it's supposed to give us that ul with all those classes inside them now for inside this ul what you want to be say we want to display our list right so we'll say put one li but won't give them some classes so i could just press tab for here so we're going to see tailwind suggestions as we do type because i feel say that one to help una understand well first make it just say text uh one so make we add those classes so the first class we would like to say one define a height by default i want set them to like 12 and then make we also set the flex to flex one of course we're going to need to set them to uh, display flex first so make we say justify content uh, if you like see video about flexbox make you let me know so i go film a video on flexbox or css grid or even both of them make you let me know and then make we say we want also add a background color to them so i will say bg dash gray and this gray make we add them for the gray of 700 but we want to make them slightly transparent by of course 50 uh, percent and now make me say we want to make it day rounded for this rounded, we want to make it day rounded for the LG side. Make it day large, like make it round well to this extent. And then, of course, as it big like this, make we say we want some padding. So we want padding for the left. And then this padding for the left, we want to set them to like 10 for here. So if you put that like this now, and we say we want this padding for the left, because you say our text, it don't move from this side for here. But inside this LI, what you want to say, make we come on this text. And make we talk say for inside here we want a span. Make we say this span, we give us some classes now. I'm going to say, sorry, class name. And the class is where we will give them for inside the class name now text. And we'll set the text to large. And we won't set the, the margin for the top and for the bottom. But we'll set this margin for the top and bottom to auto. And then say it will jump like that anyhow we want for it will decide for itself where it wants. And then once set the leading, this is not just the line height where we want set. If we don't really know what all these classes or all these um tailwind classes be, 
Then God say we get the plugin for here. And the plugin, what they do? They say they show us the real CSS class. If you look for SI here for the bottom here, you go to show us the real CSS class where we they use. So we go say we want the leading, and we would like set this leading to the leading of five for here. I press save. You suppose come more that text, and it could tell us say okay, we'll make we put that text one and say text one for here again. You can see. And you go to the right just like before, right? Now make we add that button for the bottom. So we want a button, ETN. But remember, say this button, it did different from this button. The button we want to add, the delete button, it did different. So now if you even make them to one component and then make them more dynamic. But what you want to do is say we want to create a new button for RAM. So we go there used to RAM. Okay. So I can say I want a button which now the BTN will emit. And then I'm gonna say make we give them some classes for here. Now the class will be defined now the background color. So we can say BG and I could like set this background color to red. All right. And this red will define now the red 500. Okay. But I also want to give them, of course, just like before, the hover effect. So I could say hover. And this hover we want, we want the BG, one set the BG to red. And instead of the 500, we we'll set that to 400. So if I press save for here now, I make we add some text for inside this button save. So the text for inside here, make we just call and say this now, instead of a text, we want to add an icon to this text. So how about we take add icons for React? Very simple. You get a package, what we call React icons. Now, make we go this side for here. If I come here into my browser, Okay, so you could come this site, just Google React icons and you could come the first link, uh, reacticonsgithubio And what you need to do for here, we say this site, it will help us, they give us all the React icons where we need. So any icon where you define, so bootstrap icon, game icons, ionic icons, uh, remix icons, all sorts of icons, type icons, material icons, all those icons where you define for most of all the programming world, you can see them for you. So if you define any icon, if you just say you define Facebook, and if you type Facebook for here, it will bring all the icons where they are available, where you get to face. So you go look the Facebook design where you like. If you like this one, you go choose that. If you like the messenger, you go choose that. I like this one, you go choose that. And then when you choose them, you go just click on, and that will help you copy that component where you want, right? It will help us copy that component. So first, before we go to use this package, you will need to install this package. So how we go take Drum? So now when they use npm, we copy this one. Now when they use yarn, we copy them, but just change them to the yarn or the npm um, pnpm version we will use. So for inside, we will go back into our text editor. So make I stop this process first. Control C. And then make we add that package. So the package will define now pnpm, and then we'll say add, and then we'll add React dash icons. Okay, so this React icons will help us give us this package where we get for here, and then I'm gonna just say dash dash save. So this will help me run uh the, the um, save the package as a dev dependencies. And now when we don't import this package for here, if you look inside here, they will say make we first import the package. And then make we can't use the package however we want to use this package okay so make we first come inside here and make we just search for trash for here first so i can say trash so we define this trash icon so you go click on i go see say you don't tell us say you don't copy the trash for here now make we come back inside here make we see make we run our um server again so i can say uh Let's press up on my keyboard uh, twice, and that will help me bring back my history of the commands where I run. And then make we just minimize them um, and go back into our project. And for inside this project here, make it just refresh. So we'll go with the package in, everything will start fresh with us. So I could just say, make we just add the text for here and make we come on this list even self. Make we make them in own component. We we'll go first extract them. So make we create a new component for inside this our component directory. We will add a new file, and this new file make we just call them task item. So sorry, why the type J for there? So we get this task item, and make we call them dot JSX. And this task items make we say we want to call our um item as a function. So we will say export default, and then we will just call our function. And this function will be defined now, just simple function will be called task item. And this task item, we could just say it, it, it collects some props. Um, the props where we want, we could pass them in now. Now, so make I just say we want return export, not export, export default. And then we could just say, make I close here, we could just say we want return. And then, of course, we want implicitly return 
the value so we want which now our oh sorry which now our uh, uh li so make we copy this li and we could put out for here so i could say i want the li for here now so anytime when we want to import this list we're going to import them into our unordered list for here so we don't need this code for here anymore so make it clean up and then make we just import task item and remember send our component so we we'll just say we want to import that component of task items now if you don't say we want to import them remember say i don't import them for the top for here did you see say task items so now as we don't import that task items anytime when we run this code now we're going to get them so if they replace this anytime i'm going to get that three components for here so that's how we're going to generate this task component so i could go back into the task component and make we see how we feel the pass values or props into this task component so make we come inside here i make we use the structuring for here and then make we say we the passing title so whatever title we pass in here as props now we're going to use for this our component of for here so instead of this text one we're going to pass in a title and this is our title props every time we render them we're going to show for here as props for us okay add the icon we we, we suppose they the top sorry so for inside this top for here make we import that icon so we will say import and remember how to import you can say from and then inside this um quote for here you can say we want to react icons one slash bi and uh, uh the icon we will want i'm gonna say one bi and we say one trash so make i just copy them from here bi trash that will help me copy them and then i'm gonna paste them in here so now we don't import this icon into our project so make we go back into our code or into our project and then make we call the icon for inside here so instead of the word click what you want to say we want to pass the icon inside here so we we'll say instead of the bi well we can say we want uh that uh, component of bi trash and then we'll just close them because that's self-closing component and just like that we suppose get that icon inside here now make we style this button make we style and finish so that it will look nice just like the other button we get so to style them make we say we want the text color make we increase the text size rather and the text size make we set them to to two excel that's uh, two times larger make we set the text to center one put some um padding around them so we'll just say p uh three and that will keep us padding all around them so then our button but if you look this button here you can see say you know they rounded for inside here right you know they rounded so we want rounded for the for the right side so we we'll say rounded and we want dash r then for the right side and we want to make it the day uh rounded for the wrong side make it day large just like the uh parent components which we also set for this one for here so we'll make it be the same but for only the right hand side and nobody the left hand side so if i press save you can see say our button don't round and everything just they work the same our hover but if we click them <laughs> nothing they happen for here for now so we we add our our list and make we try display them and then after that we go add the delete functionality where we go feed the delete our task for here so as we don't render this one now make we close them for now and make we close the form for now and make we make this list in own component check good day possible so make we extract them so i could come inside this component tab i add new file and make we just call this task list dot jsx for inside this task list from inside here make we cut everything from here all right make we call them as a function so we we'll say export yeah, again i will the export default default and then i want to export default this function but this function make we just call them say task list and this task list function make we say it will take in some props but we're not going to pass in the props yet again just like before we we'll just return the values where we want and i can paste that url list inside there and remember i say we never even self import this task item so i could just press command and space bar on top of this task items and then this will help me add my auto import for vs code will help me import that component for the very top for here so so don't forget to the import them now if i press save for inside this component it go to export this component for me and make me try import them inside here so we could just say we want the task list like i say i'm as a component so task list and i could just auto import them 
And if I render RAM now, it's going to give me the exact same components, even though we don't move the code around. Okay. So now this task list way there here. So we're going to say we expect some props into our list. So I think I close this. The props will be defined. We're going to use the structuring now. I'm going to say we want a displayed task. So make we come inside here. And for inside this app component, what you want to do for inside here, we say, because we don't need pass that display information as props, we're going to pass them in. Say, okay, well, now all the displayed information, make it a show as props. So we're going to say display, display task. And because now props we define one person the or task. Remember, whatever the task, the way they update that state, now we they work with. So whatever did the state, now we're going to pass in. So we will conditionally render our task. So we'll say all task. If to say all task dot length, if the length, if it be pass zero, so we'll say we will use our ternary operator for here, one return a component, and otherwise one do another thing. So for inside here, one put this code. So we want to render this component whenever the code show. Otherwise, one say, make we just add a P for now. I'm going to say paragraph tag, and I'm going to say no task. So if our components no day, they make it show us this component. Otherwise, make it show us say no task. Make I clean my browser, make we open up the console, make we check the empty states. Say our empty states, he don't they work for us for here. So so make we come inside here now for inside this task list what i want to do for here inside the console we say if i come here now and i say make me console.log this display data the console log amp you can see we get this array right we just get this array we just get this array so how we take do up make i clean this uh previous console log for line 27. so make we clean this console log and uh make we go back into our component so for inside here, we just the render the data where we they save for here. So if we add world for here and we press save, you see we they get this our array and everything they work for us for here. But you know they add, you know they update this our list component for here. So how we go take how we go take display this text for here. We don't style them everything, but how we go take display them. Simple. We go take the same component, the same array where we get here, and then we go loop over them. I don't show now how to they work with lists, right? So we just say, okay, well, whatever displayed information, don't forget to put your colibris, brace, but whatever displayed information we will get for here, one map over them or we want loop over them. So we'll say map. So we just say for inside here, make we take the items, okay? And we want to take the item rather, and this item we want to use the part arrow function to the handle arm. So we want to implicitly they return something, and then are here where we they return this list. Now this list for here it gets some kinds of things where they expect, right? So the first thing where this list they expect now the title. Remember, so we get the title, and we could just set the title to item. So whatever item will be there here, and we want the task because remember, say for inside here we they get this task key where they here so we want the world and all that kind of thing now we want to show for here so if you press save for here you can see say now we they get those words for here now why will they get this uh warning for the bottom remember when we don't watch whenever watch the video of our list we're not going to say we now put a key so we're going to give this our list item a key so give them a key and remember i say we they always they get the IDs right, and I don't tell them. I say every key suppose they unique. So we go say okay, well, make this key make it be item dot ID, and then if we refresh, you go see say we they get this code, and we they get what's this? Like I see should have a unique key props. Uh, where is that? Why did they tell me this? Uh, like I see task list. Uh, oh, sorry, I call them ID, but it's supposed to be called task ID, right? It's supposed to clear that error now. Sorry, I don't notice some. So if I press refresh, it's supposed to clear. And uh, uh, because I call them ID and I don't call them task ID, then I why it didn't show me that error for there. So uh, already we don't clear that warning and we don't get our task ID. So this now, anytime we refresh the page, it always they show. We they always save this information for our browser. So we could like we make we just create one quick button where we say if you just use clean everything for here, right? Um, so what I go like do for inside here, we say just underneath the list, I go like just say make we create a button. So I'm gonna say BTN. We're gonna see come on this button eventually. So let me just call it clean. Clean. And uh we're gonna say this button get an on-click event. So we we'll say on-click, and whenever I click this button, one run a function. 
and this function when we want to run uh, lo make we run local storage dot clear i won't call this function anytime when we click this button so anytime we click this clean button uh or this clean it go to clean the whole local storage so if we clean up go clean the local storage you no go clean the state but it go clean the local storage so if we refresh the page it don't clean everything and you they see say our no task where we add for here for inside our main component for inside our app component you just say they add this new task for here so for inside this empty state i go like just say okay so make i close my uh what's it called dev tool and inside this no task what we want to say first we want a div and now this div gonna hold everything together but first make we send the text for this div to center and as the text there the center make we add all the other elements where we want so first we want the h1 and this h1 we will just set the text for here make we give them a class and we're gonna set this class to x dash six times large okay and then we could just add one small emoji so i could just add crystal ball for here and then underneath that h1 make we add our heading component where we get before so we go say heading make we say this heading component can get some kind of other things where we get where we will need to add which now the title so we'll say one give the title no task so this will just tell us say we get no task make we add the subtitle on to say we don't get anything that now when this go show otherwise it no go show at all now when we get this component for here we feel even extract this component into one component we even make this whole jsx into your own component right and make we say we want to add a new component. We could just need to come into our components. I'm gonna just call them a new component. So maybe we call this component no task.jsx. And this no task component, make we just import the things when we need. So we're gonna say first we want to import the heading. And I'm going to import that from our uh, heading component. So we'll say dot slash heading. Because we did import them from there, make we say we want to add a function and uh don't forget say this function if we call them the no task component and you know they're taking any power any props or anything like that but what we'll do we say we go return something so what you want to return the same one of course return that div where we don't work with since so make we come back into our app component i make we scroll down make we command that code so we just cut them out and then i go paste them for here as we don't paste them for here we don't import them everything's supposed to work for us but we're not going to see this code unless we export them so we say export default and we're going to export them as a function so now if i press save we could be important for here so now for here i could just say i want to import this component as no pass once i press enter for here uh, render them it's supposed to work for me nice nice so this is a nothing don't change no error and we just get our component for it so it's either if this list now if the list or items within inside here if you plenty it go show the list but if you pass zero at that time it going to show this list for here or this state for here so now how would they work with state for inside our component so if we add new components say hello world and we press that you see, say it don't help us add this component for you. As we don't know, I'm like this. So make I just close this. I make we add that button for here now. So for inside this task list, uh, make we clear this button. And what you want to do for here now? We say we want to add functionality to inside this delete button for here. So if I press save, this clean don't clear. But we want the add functionalities, the delete functionality for here. So what we go do? We go need way we say we go the pass that event from here from this component into another component i will come into my task items and for inside this task items we go come add our event listener into ram we will come say we want an onclick event just say onclick so this onclick now we could just pass them in as a props meaning say we want to call that function whenever we click this button so we will say okay this onclick will one pass them in as a onclick props so anytime we be on when we click them we're going to get this on click props just so that we if you call out anything we want but we're going to call them on click so that we're going to feed the user so now for inside this list now as we don't pass that event this component where they here they expect in props of on click so if i press on click for here you could expect them as a props but for inside these props where they here now what you want to be say we want to pass that function into ram this function make it take a fact arrow function and this fact arrow function when they do something when they handle when delete 
So we could just call this when delete as a props. But whenever we click this function, waiting one to be saying when they pass up into something, when they pass something in. So waiting one they pass now the item dot and then we we'll go on past the task ID. Now this task ID where we they pass in as when we when we click this delete, you will see say we don't even get this function for inside here. Why? Then that because we go like pass up into here also as props. So we go say props. Sorry, not props. We say when delete, and this when delete, it will behave as a props. So whenever we pass them into here, whatever we pass into here, now so it go to behave with this function. So make we clean this one up. Uh, what you want to say for inside the app component now, when we can't render this component, we want to pass that delete of say when we delete. So we'll say when delete, and then we want to pass in this function. And because we they pass them as a function, we want to say delete task. This thing where they do pass props from grandparents to grandchild, and when they pass props deep, 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 and you nest them deep, deep, deep to great grandchild, and all those kinds of things is called prop drilling. They get other ways where we fit do this. So we'll call this delete task, but we'll call them as a function. So we'll say delete task. And this delete task, make we add them as a function. Remember, I said we never create them. So this delete task, what do you want to do for here? We say if we want to add const delete task. We won't call them as a function. And remember saying a fat arrow function, but remember say this fat arrow function like this for here. What they do? We say we want to put them in a block, so we we'll go put your curly brace. We're not going to return anything for here. And what we will do? We say this this um delete task. It expect a parameter, so it expect the current ID of the element where we they work in. So first of all, we we'll first console log the current ID. So let's say current ID. Now, if you click on what you want to be saying, we want the console log that value. So make we open up our dev tools. And uh, for inside our dev tool, if we say make we console log the current ID, you go to console log and whenever we click the delete button, you go to console log the current ID. So if I click on, you go see where they get the current ID. If I click on again, we they get this current ID of the element. So make we add another element, say world. And we get this hello and world. So if I click this world, you see, we get this ID. If I click this hello, we get this ID. So this is say we get different different IDs based on what we get. You know, since say it's easy with React to so do all these kind of things. In our JavaScript now, plain JavaScript, you go to frustrate. So make we come here and make we add this current ID. Now to get this current ID, because we they work with the local storage, we're gonna need way we say we're gonna change the state and then we're gonna clean the current ID from the local storage. So make we come back and make we say we want to set the state of the current id all right will they affect the local storage based on say whenever the state change now we want to take up all the current tasks and then we want to filter up so i'm going to say we want the task so we'll say this task now we want to get the task and we won't get the task id if you know the equals to the current id current id so now we they handle the state like i explained the delete function so what do we do we say we they change the state so anytime all tasks change, dependency array, once it trigger, this use effect will happen. And once this use effect kick in like this, it will first check if the state they like this, so okay, it will arrange itself. Otherwise, so it will clear the local storage. So make we test them. So if I come here and I click this, you can see say it don't clear. It don't even clear, give me the ID of the world. And then if we refresh the page, it's not supposed to stay there. Why? Because our use effect, it don't update. Say, oh, okay, oh, now what do we get for local storage? Okay, oh, something there, there, oh, it could come give us this information where they, the remaining local storage. And then otherwise, it could clean up if that information is not there. What do you want to be saying? You see, say we click delete. You can see, say we don't get anything again. So maybe just add some text and maybe add some more text. And then uh, if we click on, um, you can see, say we, nothing they happen. Now, for inside this, our delete task function we make for here, make we say for inside here, just on top of everything, make we say we want to use a confirm method. But first, let we say we want confirm. And this confirm, it is taking a string. So make we say we want to put in the string. So the string, we could just add them as a question. We'll say like this, it will first give us the confirmation. So make we just assign them to a variable. So we we'll say confirm delete and this confirm delete make we just assign them to that confirm for there and then what we will do we say we go say we want an if statement so we'll say if confirm delete and if not like that say if the person say true or false because you see say with the confirm if it choose whether not yes or no then you want to do something console.log and then we could just say no if no be confirmed then you go say no otherwise if not yes then we want delete it. 
So I could just come here, make me clean this console log first for now. Otherwise, we won't clean this stuff. So now, so our delete could they help us the work. So if I click delete and they ask me, am I sure I want to delete this task? If I say cancel, it could tell it could console log no. Instead of console logging the value, say no, we won't return nothing. Simply return. So if now no, then come up with the function and end the function. So if you click cancel, it just stop the function, you know, the console log anything. But if we say, say okay, it go clean. So I could test them again. We could see say everything done the work. And we press enter. Did they get that feed the dog for here? You just see say we get all that tax for here. And also, I see say it get one month when we never add. Make I show you. So you see the scroll bar, it did different, very different from most of our scroll bars. It be so make we go into our own and we get this one 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 will be here. And you see as the scroll bar they works, so make we add that scroll bar also. So I could just come into our project and into our index.css. Make I even come on this app.css. Uh, if you delete them, no matter. So to do that styles, we could just say we want double colon and then we go use the web key. And then we will just set the scroll bar. So we'll say we want make the width of this web key scroll bar. Make the width just be like 10 pixels. Okay. That's not all what we need, but for the other things, we add the comments here. So this go control the track. I make we say we want the track. We we'll say we want the border. Make we give them a border radius. I make we set the border radius to 100 bh. And then make we set the background to something else. So if you just say so make we press save and this is say now we get this our scroll bar for here the other property will be here so make we style that one make we paste this we want the dash oh sorry make we change this to track and not the mistake why i made so make we change this to thumb so i could just duplicate this two and pull them come here and what you want to say we want to change only the color of them and then make we add another comment so just like before make we paste this in here Make we say we want to make the thumb hover, all right? So that's how we detect target the hover effect. But once set this background color, so this will give us this nice pale looking color right here whenever we hover on top arm. If we say make we open up the project again and we look at you see say everything they work the same. And if we clean, if we add them, you see say it is show for the top because we set the list to reverse. And if we delete, 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 and confirm delete confirm delete and confirm delete we get this empty state so congratulations and i don't do very well i hope say this video don't show now how now we we'll feed the take work with react how now we we'll feed the build different things how now we feed the use form feed the use states feed the use props and this is not just the bare fundamentals of react this is not just the simple simple things of react when you say you could use the work for your daily life no worry if you had now no worry if you don't understand what's going to happen as time goes on as you build you could understand them i hope so now don't enjoy this stuff if you never subscribe by now why well, i never do them now if i never even like this video say why i never do them big do out so that the channel will grow so that more people will they learn tech for pitching i know say this is not a long video but for now that's all we need to learn i will see you now for the next video thank you